You're watching Get Cruise Ship Info and more. Today's latest cruise news update talks about five key topics, so enjoy the scenery while you get your daily dose of cruise news. But before we jump right in, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell to stay updated with me whenever I drop my next latest cruise update. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Port of San Diego set to double shore power at cruise terminals, according to a press release statement. The Port of San Diego confirmed that it is doubling shore power capability at its B Street and Broadway Pier cruise ship terminals to improve air quality and reduce greenhouse gas emissions on and around San Diego Bay. The Board of Port Commissioners has approved $4.6 million in funding for the project as well as various agreements related to equipment purchasing, construction, and installment of additional shore power equipment that will allow the cruise vessels calling on San Diego to connect to shore power outlets at the same time. Michael Zuckett, who is chairman with Port of San Diego Board of Port Commissioners said, This is a good investment, and it is just one of our many clean air projects on the horizon. In addition to having the infrastructure available for nearly every cruise ship to run of electricity while in port, we're also installing a solar-powered microgrid at our 10th Avenue Marine Terminal, adding more public electric vehicle chargers on the bayfront, and more. The port is committed to being a good neighbor, which includes cleaner air for everyone who lives, works and plays on and around San Diego Bay. The port said its goal is to complete the shore power expansion by September 2022, for months ahead of recently updated California Air Resources Board CARB. Regulations that require essentially all cruise ships calling on California ports to use shore power beginning January 1, 2023. Having to shore power outlets at the cruise ship terminals will result in at least a 90% overall reduction of harmful pollutants such as NOx and diesel particulate matter as well as a reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. The port first installed shore power at the cruise terminals in 2010. Act to overrule CDC's cruise restrictions blocked in Senate. The bill that could have allowed restarting U.S. cruising by July 4, 2021 was blocked from passing by Senator Patty Murray of Washington a mere eight days after its introduction. The Cruise Act aimed to revoke the CDC's current conditional sale order on cruises and require the CDC to provide COVID-19 mitigation guidance for cruise lines to resume safe domestic operations. The bill was initiated by Florida Senators Rick Scott and Marco Rubio and Senator Dan Sullivan of Alaska. Florida Senators Scott and Rubio attempted to advance their cruise careful resumption under Improved Safety Enhancements Act on April 21st on the Senate floor, but Senator Murray objected. In that way preventing it from passing DOT in her objection, Senator Murray said that cruise ships require specific focus and protocols in place to prevent future outbreaks. While I am as eager as anyone else to see a return to travel, we cannot cut corners. Doing so risks lives and will only further delay returning to normal, hurting our economy more in the long run. Said Senator Murray, we must trust the science, and we must allow the CDC to continue its work to help us return to what we love as safely as possible. So I will continue to work with CDC and the administration as they develop the next phase of their cruising guidance. But for now, I object, she explained. Senator Scott said he was disappointed by Senator Murray's objection. St. Lawrence Cruise Lines delay start of 2021 season. According to a statement, citing the current province-wide lockdown in Ontario and to allow sufficient time to reduce the number of cases of COVID-19, Street Lawrence Cruise Lines has opted to alter their 2021 cruise schedule to begin on June 24, 2021. St. Lawrence Cruise Lines President Jason Clark said, while we are disappointed to delay the start of our cruising season, we are eager to accept passengers on June 24, and we remain excited to provide a Canadian travel experience during the summer and fall months. This new starting date should also allow travelers a greater opportunity to be vaccinated. 
and tested prior to boarding, the company said. All cruise line guests who had previously planned to travel in May have been accommodated with the new cruise date in June aboard the Canadian Empress. The cruise said line intends to operate the remainder of summer and fall cruises as previously scheduled. Street Lawrence Cruise Lines offers a variety of cruises from four to seven nights in length, with departures from Kingston, Ottawa, and Quebec City. American Cruise Lines Ready for Alaska Season American Cruise Lines has confirmed it's ready to operate the 2021 Alaska season as scheduled. The season includes 8- and 11-day cruises on the inside passage that explore southeast Alaska in depth. Cruises will operate exclusively in U.S. waters aboard the American Constellation. One of the newest ships in Alaska, the June to September season will consist of 8-day southeast Alaska cruises round trip from Juneau and brand new. 11-day Alaskan Explorer Cruises which venture further into the Inside Passage, Clarence Strait, Tracy Arm, and Glacier Bay. The longer Alaskan Explorer Cruises are offered round trip from Juneau, as well as from Ketchikan to Juneau, American operates small U.S.-built, crewed, and flagged ships, which accommodate just 100 to 190 passengers and visit only domestic ports of call, according to a press release. The line said it had worked closely with both local and state officials in southeast Alaska and across the country to safely bring back small ship domestic cruising throughout the United States. We have a strong operating history in Alaska and have been glad to work with our many local partners to make this season a reality, said Charles B. Robertson, President and CEO of American Cruise Lines. Our COVID-19 operating protocols are tailored to each state and designed to mitigate risk while still enabling a meaningful contribution to each local economy. Disney to require face masks on UK cruises. Disney Cruise Line will require face masks for guests aged 11 and up on its sailings around the UK this summer aboard the Disney Magic. According to recent guidelines the company posted to its website, Face coverings are required for all guests ages 11 and up and crew members, including those who have received a COVID-19 vaccine. The company said, please bring your own face coverings and wear them at all times, except when dining, swimming or in your stateroom. You may temporarily remove your face covering while actively eating, drinking or taking an outdoor photo, but you must be stationary and maintain appropriate physical distancing during this time. Disney said it is recommending that children ages 3 to 10 wear a face covering as well. As for vaccines, the cruise line will require that guests 18 years of age and older be vaccinated against COVID-19 as defined by the X National Health Service. The Magic will also operate at what Disney said was reduced capacity, but the company did not provide further numbers. Guests will be required to complete a daily health screening questionnaire via the Disney Cruise Line Navigator APP. Each day, via the APP on a guest's smartphone, they will receive a notification and link to complete the health questionnaire. Daily temperature checks will be required for all guests and crew. Crew will be stationed at the entrances to the dining rooms during lunch to take temperatures. Guests displaying a temperature higher than 38C will be referred to the onboard medical center. Disney has also installed signs and ground markings to help guests better navigate common areas while practicing physical distancing between travel parties. In addition, where it may be difficult to maintain physical distancing guidelines, physical barriers, like plexiglass, have been added throughout the 1998 built ship. Finally, the company said it is adding more hand sanitizing stations have been placed throughout the ship and will institute more cleaning, paying extra attention to high touch. Areas such as handrails, doorknobs, and elevator buttons, youth spaces, dining rooms, and other common spaces, and inside all staterooms. In addition, all guest areas will undergo a deep cleaning nightly. Marine Exchange Cloud Computing and AI Next Thing Onboard Cruise Ships Cloud Computing and Artificial Intelligence AI may soon be aboard cruise ships, according to Hans Linthaler, Managing Director of Marine Exchange Software, Offering the MXP Enterprise Software Platform for the Cruise Industry, celebrating Marine Exchange's 20th anniversary this year. The company has played a key role in developing software written specifically for the industry. With the portfolio of software and hardware solutions, 
managing all office and ship-related activities. Today, Maureen Exchange has offices in Hamburg, in Graz, Austria, and has more than 60 employees. The client list counts some 40 cruise lines and approximately 300 ships, including ocean-going ships and approximately 300 ships, including ocean-going ships and river cruise vessels. And with that, we conclude our latest cruise news update for April 27th. If you enjoyed watching this video, a subscribe to my channel and a thumbs up for my video will really be appreciated. Thank you and see you soon. Until then, take care and stay safe.